Hey everyone, Paul here from Orthway Valpal. Um, today we're going to be talking about cervical myelopathy and Keith here happens to have that and thank you Keith for demonstrating for us so that the world can learn more about cervical myelopathy and how to recognize it and manage it. Um, so Keith, how old are you? 46. 46. And when did you start to have some symptoms that were starting to bother you? About a month ago. Okay. And what is it that you were feeling a month ago when you first started to develop symptoms? Uh, woke up one morning with lower leg stiffness, soreness, uh, loss of feeling in my foot on the outside and around the toes. Um, feeling never really came back. Gradually progressed to where my right foot was also feeling numb and I actually needed assistance going up and down stairs, had to hold on to railings, and I just had this overall sense of imbalance, right. walking on uneven terrain. Yeah, and you fell a couple of times. Yeah. And um, so, and it's progressively getting worse. Yes. Okay, um, and so one of the things we noticed when he walked in is that he was taking a wide base of support and having difficulty lifting his feet. Transfers were also a little weak. I mean, if you watch him try to, try to put your heel, this heel on that knee, he can't really do it. He usually has to take his hand and pull it up there, try the other side. So we've got some weakness all the way around uh, in the hip flexors, the quads, the um, toe extensors, dorsiflexors. He can't go up on his tiptoes. So globalized weakness from the waist down. No weakness in the upper extremities. No neck pain. No. Look to the left all the way, look to the right all the way and look straight ahead. And so a lot of people can still have cervical myelopathy and not really have a lot of neck pain. That can be somewhat deceiving. So what makes us kind of think of this? So I'm gonna talk about and show you some of our exam today so that you can see why we would have made the decisions that we made. So I started with reflex testing and I tested his C7, C5, C6. Those were fine, okay? Then when I came down to his knees, you'll see here that a little bit on the hyperreflexive side. Now, if you take a close look at when I do his Achilles, pretty jerky, but I also noticed, also noticed that he's got a little clonus, like he's bouncing a couple times, and that is the same on both sides, okay? So because I noticed that he had some hyperreflexia a little bit, I jumped right into some clonus, so take a look at this. I'm just going to dorsiflex him really quickly. And notice he continues to bounce for several seconds. Okay, and same thing on this side. And from there, thought, well, why don't we check his Babinski? So if you take a good look at his big toe and his little toes, we stroke from the outside in. Notice the big toe goes up. The little toes actually follow later. Okay, we'll try it on this side, see if you can see that better on that side. Notice how the big toe goes up, okay? So, globalized weakness, we have a positive Babinski, we have clonus, we're hyperreflexive, then we have to decide, is this coming from the thoracic or lumbar spine or coming from the cervical spine? Well, he had had an MRI that showed that his, he had some bulging discs and a little bit of nerve root compression, which wasn't really a big deal. Um, it, it wouldn't give us these myelopathic symptoms. So I then went up here and tested his Hoffman. So I need you to really relax. We're going to just flick the end of the finger, watch the index finger and thumb. Just relax. There it is. You can see the four finger, the index finger flex, and he has the same thing on the other side. So, with that being said, we asked for an MRI of the cervical spine, and when they did that, they found considerable um, cervical cord flattening between C5, C6, um, and and significant compression, and he has congenitally short pedicles, which means that the Spinal cord is being compressed really, really hard at C5, C6. Um, he's heading down for surgery tomorrow, and um, hopefully that will help decompress that and uh, let things work a lot better from the neck down. So those are all the signs and symptoms of uh, cervical myelopathy. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks.